For millions of years, humans have been making things out of wood. And subsequently, through the years, we've passed down ways to make the job a little bit easier. But no matter how fancy our technology is nowadays, the simplest things tend to be the ones that stick. Here are my favourite tips that I've picked up along my own journey. All of them rely on simple ideas that make workshop life easier. First things first. I can't do that. The humble washer. In every workshop, whether you like it or not, one of these bad boys will be rolling around under your feet somewhere. But did you know, they double as a really helpful outline and template generator. The way this works is very simple. Put a pencil in the middle of the washer, you can then roll the washer's edge around any template you want to extend. The thickness of the wall of the washer will determine how wide your line is all the way around. The second trick I'm going to tell you about is taking this ordinary pencil and turning it into your best friend when it comes to measuring out tough corners. If you plane down the pencil, like this, what this does is removes the thickness of the lead and the bottom of the pencil when you're trying to mark an accurate line. I'll show you what I mean. This is hard to explain, so I hope this helps, but it's really simple and effective and a great way for tracing contours accurately. You might have seen this in the ukulele build video. I use it when I'm fitting head and tail blocks accurately. Next up though, here's a trick for your hand plane. Planes, really great to do normal plane stuff with. Have a good time there, 10 out of 10. Shooting board, my bro, love it. But did you know the plane also has a good time on its back in a vise? If you're trying to plane bits of really thin veneer, for example, or if the material's too thin to go on the shooting board without bending at the other end when you put pressure on it, this is a really good way of planing something much like you would with a machine planer, passing it manually across the top, gliding it beautifully flat. It seems obvious, now I say it, but actually a lot of people don't realize that you can use a plane in this way. So I thought I'd include that on the list because I myself was somebody who didn't realize that until I was shown it. The next thing I'm gonna show you is my absolute favorite. When I was building this workshop, I was doing a, a bit of joinery, which I'm not really familiar with. I didn't wanna be bothered to mark everything so accurately like I do with guitars. So I ended up using this trick a lot. When you next need to rule a line along a piece of timber at a certain depth, whether it's finding a center line roughly or creating a pencil line if you want to line up some screws, if you hold the pencil like this, you can use your finger as a depth gauge and just create a really even line like that. Again, wouldn't recommend doing it on a precise thing, but it's perfect for when it doesn't matter so much. If you're working with a particularly satanic timber, make sure you wear gloves. Next one up is a modern drill hack. For me, circle cutters are a pain in my ass. You order a six mil circle cutter, it'll cut like a 6.1, 6.2 mil hole or like a 5.8 or it's never accurate. I use a circle inlay on every single one of my Tempest guitars and the way I achieve that is like this. I drill the hole, I put the little inlay of the logo in and then I have to cut a perfect circle that fits that in a diameter exactly. If it doesn't fit exactly, it'll look like crap. Don't ask me how I know that. And as I say, never has a circle cutter been the exact diameter, ever. What I do to get around that is I get my friend the hand drill out. Avec le hand drill, I use le petit dowel. I don't know why I'm talking in French. I will then use a circle cutter to cut a circle which is vaguely in the ballpark and it has to be oversized, not undersized. I normally go a mil higher because it genuinely is so inaccurate. I'll then super glue the rough circle onto the end of the dowel. I'm not gonna do it now because if you hadn't noticed already, I hate circle cutters, so I don't wanna do it. But imagine there is a circle on the end of this, super glued on. What you can then do Pop the drill in your dowel, dowel in your drill, and you have a spinning friend. Then comes the fun bit. Get a sanding block or lay out some sandpaper on a table. If you keep the drill at a steady height above the sandpaper, you can clamp it if you want, but I never bother. Then you got yourself a little lathe that will do your bidding just fine. For minor tweaks of circular things, it's a perfect way of doing it. Obviously you don't go strapping a massive like bowl blank on there because obviously you're not gonna get anywhere, but you know, little things does the trick. Next. Next is kind of a more of a technique than an actual hack, but I've found it quite useful over the years. And that is using a soldering iron, a bit of kitchen roll and some water in order to steam out any dents that you get in softer woods, such as spruce, redwood. Again, I'm using guitar wood examples. This has been especially useful if I've slipped with a clamp or something and created a teeny ding. All you need to do is get paper towel, water, Get your soldering iron on, cover the ding that you want to steam out with the tissue and just gently 
touch the soldering iron to the wood and watch those wood fibers spring back up into place. We had a willing assistant to help us commit the crime of the dent, a nice healthy dent. Get that wet tissue on the fibers and just touch the soldering iron gently. Doesn't want to be scorching, but you know, it's got to be hot enough that it'll sizzle when you touch it. Don't hold the soldering iron there for too long because it will leave a burn mark in the wood, but that's the job. I'm really not very good at doing this, so I try and avoid it at all costs, but it is good to know it's there if I need to. Next up is something I did in my last video, which a couple of you noticed, so I wanted to bring that up here as well. When you're clamping together a few pieces of wood and it's very slippery, there is a way that you can stop the slippage. This is particularly relevant for a scarf joint for a guitar neck or when you're gluing the bottom of the neck up, like the, um, the heel blocks. What you wanna do is once you've applied your glue, wipe out a little bit in the middle, drop some super glue on there and then clamp it up. The super glue will bond much quicker than the normal glue and create a really solid start to your clamping job, supporting the slippage and making your life a hell of a lot easier. The next one is something I get asked about quite a lot because I put it sometimes in like my photos or my video content and people are like, is that what I think it is? The answer is yes. It being used inner tubes from a bicycle. These I get free from my local bike shop down the road. A little bit of scalpily walpily in the middle there. And what you find yourself with is a brilliant clamp. Again, I use these on guitars when I'm doing the binding to just make sure everything is perfectly secure and wrapped up, but you could use them for whatever you want. The sky's the limit. I don't like using string because it's not flexible. So yeah, bike inner tubes. Also, it's recycling. In that vein, just another really quick one to do with recycling. Don't throw away your old store cards and credit cards because they make excellent glue scrapers. You can even take them to the bandsaw and cut little um, like trench rivets in them, which I do when I'm laminating guitar sides because they're like the perfect size for that. And they're nice and flexible, but not too flexible. It's, it's great, it's good. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe and leave a comment, obviously, but more importantly, if you have any tips or tricks that you feel like are gapingly missing from this video, please put them in the comments. Because to become better woodworkers, we always have to be learning. But